A very good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News here on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. I am Jesse Ramdeo. Thank you for joining us. Here's what's making the news. Opposition leader Kamala Pissar Bissessa has rejected Attorney General Reginald Armour's explanation for why his affidavit said he acted as junior counsel for former Finance Minister Brian Kwaitung in the airport corruption trial, when in fact the evidence shows that he was actively involved in the case. Armour issued a statement yesterday saying the content in the affidavit was according to his best recollection. Pasabi Sessa, however, is not happy with his position. She states that the AG has finally admitted to lying on the affidavit. Pasabi Sessa said Armour opted to admit to his legal sins only after weeks of non-stop public pressure a draft motion of no confidence against him by the Law Association and a motion of no confidence against him being brought by the opposition UNC in the parliament. She questions, quote, how can A.G. Armour really expect any right-thinking person to believe that he forgot his own significant role in one of the biggest cases of his legal career? Does he take us for fools, end quote. Pasabi Sessa says Armour must now do the honourable thing and resign with immediate effect. Failing this, the opposition leader says Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley must fire him forthwith. In other news, the Court of Appeal has rejected two legal challenges against ongoing public health regulations to address the COVID-19 pandemic. In a judgment on Monday, Chief Justice Ivor Archie and appellate judges Mira Dean Amora and James Abu dismissed an appeal brought by five men who were arrested at a guest house last year and charged under the regulations for gathering in a group of more than five. The appeal panel upheld a ruling by former High Court Judge Ronnie Budu saying that the regulations passed under the Colonial Age Public Health Ordinance were not unconstitutional. In the same judgment, the panel also upheld a counter-appeal brought by the Office of the Attorney General over Budu Singh's decision to allow Pandit Sachinan Maharaj to challenge criminal penalties being imposed on places of worship for breach of the regulations and guidelines. Dean Amora, who wrote the judgment, said the panel felt that the regulations were sufficiently clear. In some other news, a special reserve police officer has been arrested in connection with the theft of a vehicle. According to police, around 12.45 p.m., I.L. Kwamina of Fari Village, Sangre Grande, drove to a pharmacy located at Toko Road, Sangre Grande, and left the vehicle open with the engine running and its keys in it. About five minutes later, when Kwamina came out of the pharmacy, his vehicle, valued at $180,000, was missing. He made a report at the San Grande police station. The vehicle was later found in Porto, Spain, with an occupant who was reported to be an SRP constable, who is now under arrest. State-owned Heritage Petroleum is looking for a new chief executive officer to replace Arlene Chow, who is retiring. In a newspaper advertisement, the company said the incumbent will report to the chairman of the board of directors and provide a vision and strategic leadership for the organization's success. In September 2019, Chow was appointed as the company's interim CEO after American Mike Wiley returned to the U.S. for cancer treatment. Wiley was initially appointed in 2018 following former state oil company Petrotrin's restructuring into distinct upstream and downstream operations. Wiley was then retained by Heritage after a lengthy search by international recruitment company Egon Zender International between June 28, 2018 and August 21, 2018. However, Wiley was fired by the Keith Rowley administration after a protracted sick leave kept him away from the job for over two months. Chow, who was then appointed temporarily to replace Wiley, was the chief operating officer of Atlantic LNG up to her retirement in December 2018. And Tobago is reporting one additional COVID-19-related death, bringing the total number of people to die of COVID-19 on the sister isle to 270. And two more COVID-19 positive cases have been recorded, bringing its active cases to 151. In commemoration of World Refugee Day, Head of National Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Trinidad and Tobago, Miriam Artica, is encouraging citizens to be more mindful and welcoming of immigrants into the country. She reminds citizens that these are persons who fled their home countries for their own safety and survival. We have actually registered um, asylum seekers of 38 different nationalities. And of course, we are doing refugee status determination for those in need. And if the situation in the home country um, basically ceases to exist, 
um, in terms of the reason why they fled, then of course we would support them to return and we would encourage. But where it is not yet safe to return, we would not do so. She also went on to mention that refugee numbers had reached an all-time high with 100 million refugees worldwide, of which 22,000 are in Trinidad and Tobago alone. Well, it's now time for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll have sports and your weather forecast. Welcome back in sports. Poland will not consider defender Marseille Rybas and his plans for the World Cup in Qatar after he signed a new contract with a Russian club. The left-back, who has 66 caps to his name, has spent the past five years in Russia with Lokomotiv Moscow and moved to their city rival Spartak Moscow on a free transfer on June 11th. In some international developments, Russian President Vladimir Putin has said Moscow will further strengthen and modernize its armed forces, including deploying its newly tested Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missiles by the end of 2022. Putin made the comments in a televised meeting with military academy graduates amid Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine. Russia successfully tested the missile in April, unnerving some observers at a time of heightened tensions that has again raised the prospect of nuclear confrontation with the West. Putin says the deployment will come as part of a larger build-up of Russia's military, adding that troops have already begun to receive S-500 air defense and missile defense systems, which he says have no match in the world. We'll take a look at today's weather forecast courtesy the TNT Met Office. This country can expect to be partly cloudy with periods of light or moderate showers in some areas. There's a 70% chance of heavy showers or thunderstorms in a few areas, especially in Tobago. Conditions will gradually settle by late afternoon into evening, becoming generally fair despite lingering showers. Seas are moderate with waves reaching 2 meters in open waters and below 1 meter in sheltered areas. Gusty winds and street flooding can occur in the event of heavy showers or thunderstorms. There's an adverse weather alert yellow level in effect. The forecast maximum temperature for Trinidad and Tobago is 30 degrees Celsius. Well, thank you for joining us for a look at the day's development so far. We'll have these stories and much more in a major newscast at 7 p.m. today. For now, do enjoy the rest of your day.